<laughs> Whoa! Hello, my friends, and welcome to a very special momentous occasion because in front of me, I have one of, if not the greatest game consoles of all time, the Nintendo GameCube. Where did you buy this? What is all this? Is this just like an eBay thing? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it smells like an eBay thing. I'm gonna give the GameCube just a little bath here. A little TLC for this little buddy. Whoever take those cables of packing tape deserves to be shot. Tell me how you really feel, Matt. Uh, I was pretty clear on how I really felt. Oh, okay. Ken, how much was the ultimate Nintendo GameCube? This was about $130. $130? Are you trying to tell me that, like fine wine, the GameCube has appreciated in value over the last almost 20 years, as this was, for a time, available for only $99.99. What a bargain. Oh, I was about to plug in our controller, but we have a WaveBird. So the GameCube was one of, if not the very first console to have a wireless controller option. This was well before the PS3, the Wii. First party. Oh, okay, sure, there were some weird third party things. But the WaveBird was really cool, and I, sadly, was never cool enough to actually have a WaveBird. Ken, you had a WaveBird, right? I had two. You had two WaveBirds? Two WaveBirds! What? Yeah. Richie Mc... Over here. So essentially the WaveBird is just a standard GameCube controller, but with all the wireless stuff built on the bottom. This is actually in pretty good shape. How much was a new-ish inbox WaveBird? So with the packaging, which is a, probably a huge part of this pricing, it was about $175. <laughs> if you wanted it completely unopened, it would be $350, but this one has a little bit of a slit in the plastic, so. Are you trying to tell me that I could have bought a brand new Xbox Elite controller instead of a GameCube WaveBird? No. Seems like a great idea. I'm much more in favor of the WaveBird. Okay, so this is something I actually did have. This is the Game Boy Player. So on the bottom of the GameCube, there are a couple of little ports that you can take advantage of which could give you various different accessories, and the Game Boy Player is the one that I really liked. So essentially, this is a full Game Boy built inside. Ken, this looks, wait, this isn't new in box, is it? It is new in box. Look, I miss my Game Boy Player. This thing is great, but this thing being new in box, how much was a Game Boy Player new in box in 2020? So this was $360. Look, I actually legitimately feel really bad about trying to open this. Because not only is this something which is really rare and very expensive, but this packaging is like flawless. Like this looks like I could have straight gotten it off the bargain bin at Big Lots for $35 in 2004. I'm still gonna keep this over here. I don't wanna open this unless we really have to because it's so nice. I'm like dead serious. I don't wanna open up the Game Boy Player. That's so nice. It even has the Toys R Us on it. So this is the Intech rechargeable battery pack to take your GameCube anywhere. Obviously, as a very advanced modern console with a carrying handle, you could actually make this thing somewhat portable. But with this, you could actually take it on the go. Wait, so this actually, we can't do all of these together. So we would have to do the battery pack instead of the Game Boy Player. I don't wanna open the Game Boy Player is what I'm trying to say. Okay, we'll do that later. We're still gonna try to be a little careful with the packaging. So these things are like, oh, Jesus Christ. What was that? What? You are not so careful with the packaging. Woo, that's heavy. That's an old school battery right there. So it's really pretty straightforward. So it just has charging on or off, which is weird, I guess, for the battery. It uses the actual GameCube power adapter to juice up. Oh, look at all these other things. So we could have gotten the GeForce controller. We could have gotten the GeForce 2. GeForce controllers. Actually. Really? Yeah. Ah. So we have the game screen. We also have the game sound system, which is a pair of speakers that go beside your GameCube. Memory card, video cables, GameCube link. Oh, and the screen. Well, how convenient for me. So this is the Intech GameCube color game screen. Now I know this was really popular back in the day. In fact, 
I feel like you wanted to buy one of these for Mystery Tech a few years ago and we didn't end up picking it up. But essentially, just like with the original PS1, not the PlayStation 1, there was a first party little attachment screen that you could get for it. Well, while this wasn't a official licensed GameCube screen from Nintendo, Intech actually did make this and it sort of color matches alongside the battery. I also own one of these too. I know you were a rich kid, Ken. I know you had all the cool, fun toys. Look, not all of us were as fancy as Mr. Bolito over here. When my parents were gambling in Atlantic City and left me in the hotel room, this was my best friend. You know what, never mind. I'm sorry for your childhood, Ken. So, how much was the battery and how much was the screen? The battery was $30. Wait, so the battery actually was $30, basically MSRP? Yeah. Okay, what about the screen? I bet that was expensive. Um. It was $250 because of the whole packaging and everything that came with it. Well, at least someone did the work for me and it's already kind of open, so I can just sort of slide it out. Wait, what is going on here? Oh, it's got like a weird like adapter on the back. So essentially, we just take this like so, and it just slides in, huh? Yeah, there we go. A little bit back heavy, but now we have a screen which just nicely folds on top of our GameCube. Oh, this is actually really cool. You know, actually something I just realized, the screen has an AVN. So if you didn't want to just use this screen for your GameCube, you could also watch videos on it. I played my PS2 on it too. You played your PS2 on a GameCube screen? I did. I brought my PS2 with me to the hotel too, just in case. Okay, boomer. I have a feeling that you might be able to run the Game Boy Player and the batteries at the same time. <sighs> Do I really have to open up the Game Boy Player? This is so nice, cat. Simba. Okay, that's not gonna work the way I thought it was gonna work. I have to rethink that one a little bit. Now that I've ruined uh, my future retirement fund, let's take a look and see what we've got. So first of all, we have the startup disk. This is essentially what runs the game, the software, that will then, uh, I almost said emulate, it's not really emulating though, it's actually running GameCube, Game Boy games on the GameCube. Okay, we have our Game Boy Player. So inside this innocuous little black box is essentially an entire Game Boy Advance, including the guts of an original Game Boy. So you can see we can have our little card slot here, but interestingly, this is the same configuration as the standard Game Boy, which meant that even for weirder accessories like the e-reader, that actually would fit in here no problem. And of course you have the link cable port. So theoretically, if you were like me and had no friends, you could take your Game Boy and trade Pokemon with your Game Boy player on a different game. I definitely did that a lot. So this is actually really straightforward. So there's just a little port on the bottom of the GameCube. And all you need to do is just lock it in here. Now if I can get this to all work together on the battery, which it will-ish. Not a perfect fit, but you know what? That's fine, that's fine. We're building our tower of power if this was the correct company, which is not. <clears throat> our tower of Nintendo, our tower of Pokemon. I gotta say, I'm feeling pretty good about our ultimate GameCube right now. So theoretically, if I put this disc in, we're ready to fire this up, right? Yeah, all right, that's on. Here goes nothing. That screen might be a little broken though. Dude, this thing's pretty good. Like it's loud. What a great way to play original Game Boy games. It's only slightly larger than the original Game Boy. So the next step, really, is going to be, can we unplug this? Do you think it'll work? All right, here goes nothing. Three, two, one. No, well that didn't work. <laughs> okay, um, it has a little bit of power. It's not enough to actually run the GameCube. So our 20 year old battery is sadly not enough to be portable. So we can't call this the ultimate portable Game Boy. We just have to call it the ultimate Game Boy. To be fair, it said it charged it for four hours. We gave it about 15 minutes. That's not for a Game Boy. Donkey 
Tonga? Is the rhythm in you? Oh, we're about to find out. done in the entire history of the channel. I love how we have as what? much fun with this so many years later <laughs> as we do with like the Switch. It's like this game is actually kind of timeless, it's awesome. Well, that's a lot of stuff. So this is the M Classic. Now this is essentially, you can run various different older consoles to HDMI with this, right? So essentially it's processing off, upscale, anti-alias, and sharpness, or retro mode for retro games. What is this? This looks 3D printed. So that is a 3D printed um, adapter. GC plug. Yeah. So essentially you plug it into the GameCube and then it gives you an HDMI directly out of it. Yeah. Oh, that's super interesting. Okay, I'll plug this directly in here. Hey, we're double dongling. Look at that. Double dongling. So 660 by 448 i That actually is not a bad looking picture though. So now that we're double dongling, let's triple dongle and see if we can really get the cleanest HDMI picture out of our double dongle GameCube. So we're just gonna carefully dongle. I'm gonna try to dock the dongle. And the dongle has landed. <laughs> that looks like a fire hazard. Um, the dongle actually weighs so much, it is literally pulling it out of the GameCube right now. We're just gonna mount this on the back of the conga to keep it from falling. Okay, I'm gonna unplug the dongle for a second and see if I can re-dongle my dongle. Sure, what seems to be the problem here? I mean, this all seems to be in, <laughs> this all seems to be in order. Here, I'll hold, I'll hold the dongles. All right, we're good, we're good. Okay, I'm holding the dongles. It's, so there we go. Oh, there we go, oh, it works. See, look, 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 look how great our Dongle chain of Dongle Town is. So it said it was. Oh, oh, oh. no. Okay, I, I, okay, I'll hold it. Oh, Fine. Oh. There you go. There you go. We're good. Does it look good, guys? I'm on upscale mode. I can switch. You modes. know what? That actually looks really good. Okay, so this is normal mode. Okay. So that's non upscale. That's, uh, yeah. I see a noticeable difference. Go. Okay, so this is upscale mode. Oh, that is definitely sharper. And this is retro mode. Definitely not. No, we're gonna do upscale mode. Upscale mode is where it's at. So through extreme precision and craftsmanship here at Overclock Media, we have constructed the ultimate GameCube. So now that we have the GameCube itself uh, with the screen, I excuse cannot, me, Ken, I'm talking right now. I cannot see anything. Well, I'll doing. show it to you in a minute. With our extreme precision, we have our GameCube with our display, our WaveBird, our Game Boy Player, battery, and then if you come around, well, I'll, I'll get out of the way. If you come around to the back, you'll see that we have a very expert chain of dongles. So we have the M plug going into HDMI, going into a HDMI mail to mail, into the M Classic via USB, through HDMI, into the TV, and it looks great. Thank you very much for watching this episode. No, sorry, we're not done yet. We have to play some games now. Do we have another game? Smash. My body is ready. Your nipples ready. You wanna see my nipples, Matt? Another uh, thing, I've never played Melee before. <laughs> right. The C stick does, wait. The C stick is your uh, your smash. The C stick does not work on this. Wow, that C stick is really fing delayed. Why? <laughs> that sounds like someone who's blaming the tools. Well, I mean, when you I'm. When you play F1. Oh, fing all trace. <laughs> You guys, I'm up two stock right now, right? I know. Yeah, because I'm because i like trying to figure out how to use this C stick because it's not working properly. <laughs> okay, let's, let, we can rematch, we can rematch. That one doesn't count. Mr. I'm- You guys switch controllers. Yeah, actually yeah, though. Fine. Yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> use a C stick. I'm a real professional. Sure. Time to Donkey Konga. There we go. Okay, yeah, this is working way better. <laughs> okay, you know what? You're right. This controller is actually a little sticky. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, <laughs> it's it's not, not working properly, dude. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> No! <laughs> ah. Yeah. All right, all right, well played. <sighs> Best of three? Sure. All right, let's go. Okay, there we go. That, that's what I don't like. <laughs> oh, Whoa! 
Oh yeah, I forgot you could steal my moves. <laughs> no, 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 go, 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 the bomb, the bomb. <laughs> oh, no! That was your own fault, but That was mine, that was mine. Oh, damn. Uh, you know, you got me there. You're up by one stock. Yeah. Come on! No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what have we learned today? We have learned that the Ultimate GameCube is truly a masterpiece to behold. How much did we spend on the Ultimate GameCube? I don't know, probably several hundred dollars more than we should have. Oh, I should have laid back on the GameCube controller. Oh. oh. But can you put a price on friendship and nostalgia? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs>